Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26 Public Beta 3 and iOS 26 Beta 6 re-release. They're identical in every way, it just took a few days for the Public Beta to release, and they came in at very different sizes depending on which version you're installing. If you're installing the Public Beta from Beta 2, it came in at 15.89 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro, and 1.24 gigabytes on the 16 Pro Max installing from beta 6 to beta 6 re-release. So definitely different in size. It depends which one you're installing from though. Now this is the exact same build as I mentioned before. You can switch between them, but there's no benefit other than just getting the developer beta first with additional bugs that may not be re-released on the public beta. Now, Apple also released other updates today, iOS 18.6.1 to the public, watchOS 11.6.1 with a new feature that they've brought back to some Apple watches in the United States, as well as iPadOS 26 beta 6 re-release. So lots of updates today, and let's go ahead and take a look at the build number, then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go to general, then about. The build number is 23A5318F. They're identical on both the public beta on the left and beta 6 re-release on the right, and that's how you can tell they're identical. So not really any difference there, you just got it a little bit earlier on the developer beta. As far as a modem update, well, there is no modem update going from beta 6 to beta 6 re-release, but if you're on public beta 2 going to public beta 3, you will have a modem update. So you should see maybe some changes with overall connectivity. I know I did with beta 6, it seemed to be much better. Now we do have more features to talk about, but many of you want to know right away, does iOS 26 beta 6 re-release have the same speed and fluidity of iOS 26 beta 6? So I have beta 6 here on a 15 Pro Max, beta 6 re-release on a 16 Pro Max. So let's go ahead and open a few different apps. We'll just place these down like this. We'll do one of those general speed tests just to show you side by side. You'll see how quickly they open. Again, the same there, podcasts the same, swiping the same. Everything seems very fluid. In fact, maybe even a little more fluid on beta 6 re-release with ProMotion, different apps and everything else. Going into different ones, everything's super fast here. Just going in and out, it seems like it's working very, very well. So no concern there. Now with today's update, the public release of watchOS 11.6.1, if you have a Series 9, Series 10, or Apple Watch Ultra 2, Apple brought back the blood oxygen level sensor in the United States. They had to remove it due to some legal issues. They now have a workaround, and many have been asking, will it work on iOS 26 betas? So I thought I'd do that. I showed this before in a different video with iOS 18.6.1 and how it works. Now I've removed it from that iPhone with 18.6.1, added it to 26 beta 6 re-release, and if we go into the watch here, you'll see it. If we go to my watch, go to general and about, you can see that it's on watch OS 11.6.1. If we go back and then we scroll down and go to blood oxygen, you'll see it's not available. So they haven't added it to this version and you won't see it here as well. You'll get the old error like you didn't have it before. So if you go into it, it says the blood oxygen app is no longer available. So we'll have to wait maybe for public beta four or beta seven in order to have this. Maybe they'll add it then, but it's currently available only on iOS 18. 6.1 again on those watches if you didn't have it as far as other new features well one thing they've brought back is if you're providing feedback if we go into feedback this is new on beta 6 re-release and public beta 3 now within the feedback app if we go to provide feedback here maybe for ios we're having an issue if we scroll down to the bottom you'll see ios sysdiagnose this is something that was removed in beta 6 that they've brought back with beta 6 re-release in public beta 3. so if you're providing feedback this is helpful to gather information about your phone and thanks to noah for pointing this out now i found some other features i thought i'd mention since the ios 26 beta 6 is out what's new video one of those has to do with preview if we go into preview and you'll see within preview on the ipad we now have the loop here it's just a nice little touch we can drag it around look at different things and i'm not seeing it on ios but i am seeing it on ipad os however some people do see it on ios i'm just not seeing it for some reason but let me know if it's showing up for you 
Liquid glass is also an area where I mentioned most of the changes, but not everything. It continues to get small changes and improvements. For example, it now has adaptive backgrounds that seem to adapt more. You'll see here in dark mode, if I switch this maybe over to light mode, as I scroll through, you'll see it adapts as I scroll. So it just went from sort of a frosted glass to a clear translucent glass. And this is something that will change more and more throughout. You'll see there are some bugs here and there with it still. And again, that's in beta six and beta six re-release, but definitely something that's nice throughout the OS. If we go into Safari, for example, and if we scroll here, you can see it change in the background down here under the apple.com information. You'll see it just changed under the URL rather, and it definitely has some issues, but it is adapting to what's behind it. So they continue to make these changes. The same is true in the control center. One of the changes they've made here is if we press and hold and we go into, instead of jiggle mode, we go into sort of this pulse with an outline. So it's sort of adding a stroke to each one of these icons. And you can see that here where they're sort of pulsing this way instead of jiggling. So that's sort of a new update. Maybe they'll add it to the home screen as well. So let me know if you like that or you prefer sort of the jiggle that we have here on the home screen. If we go into podcasts and we're listening to a podcast here, so just pick whatever one you want, we can increase and decrease the speed of the podcast just by dragging your finger up and down now. So you'll see that change here. Of course, you can just tap on it, but you can change it just by tapping or swipe up and down now to speed it up and down. If we go into the shortcuts app, maybe we go and create a new one under the library here. We'll go ahead and do that. Maybe we'll just add an app, maybe even the app store here, find an app in the app store name here. And if we tap on apps, you'll see the dialogue here where it says select variable, ask each time, clipboard, current date, device details. This is a little bit larger and more highlighted. So super smooth in this update too, but you'll see what it looks like here. There's also an update in the code when it comes to AirPods. This time around, it looks like they're connecting faster with beta six re-release. I had to manually connect these often on beta six for my iPhone for whatever reason. But one of the things it seems that nine to five Mac has identified is the feature that Mark Gurman talked about where we would have live translation on the AirPods. So this was hinted at by sort of a splash screen or something we could see in future updates that was found in iOS 26 assets overall. So that's something that we'll see in the future, I think. And maybe with the next beta, we'll see that actually work. Also, there's another splash screen I didn't mention in journal. So if we go ahead and unlock it there, you'll see now we have what's new in journal. Now on iPad and Mac, keep multiple journals, create richer entries and more. So that's something I didn't notice before, but it's a new splash screen and we're seeing many of those throughout. Also with regards to liquid glass, if we drag our finger back and forth here, we have what appears to be sort of a chromatic refraction. So as we move our finger back and forth, they've updated the animation, it's super smooth and fast, but you sort of have this look to it, just much, much nicer and little attention to detail that we expect from Apple that we haven't seen for some time. Now, as I mentioned before, it doesn't seem like there's any degradation in performance whatsoever, and there hasn't been any degradation since I've been using this full time since Tuesday. That's great news. I haven't had it reboot or anything like that, and I haven't had it slow down. So overall, it's been performing as you would expect. You've seen throughout the video, it's not perfect hundred percent yet, but it's definitely getting much, much better. If we go to the lock screen here and scroll down. You can see that here as I scroll back and forth, everything is smooth. You can see the background change back and forth as you would expect. And then everything is just nice and smooth as it was with beta six. So great news there. Hopefully it continues to improve. As far as the overall heat, well, the phone is a bit warm right now, definitely warmer than it was before, but it's probably still processing in the background. And so it's definitely maybe indexing, continuing to process after installing that update. As far as battery life, well, we'll talk more about that in the weekend follow-up video, but if we take a look at battery, battery health, I'm at 96% with 295 cycles. And if we go back and take a look at battery usage yesterday, I used 73% of the battery and only had two hours and 54 minutes of screen active time, six hours and 47 minutes of screen idle time. Today is a little bit better with 63% usage, three hours and 20 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 26 minutes of screen idle time. So I think it's going to improve. Of course, the next few betas should definitely help with that. And I'm expecting those fairly soon. So probably as soon as next Monday, we could have iOS 26 beta seven. However, we had the beta six re-release. Maybe they'll wait till later in the week. We don't really know, but either way, I would expect beta seven sometime next week. Again, public beta four sometime after that. And in just a couple weeks, we should see some invites for the iPhone 17 event. 
We expect that probably around September 8th. We don't have a concrete date at this point, but Apple will send those invites usually a week or two ahead of time. And we'll know that then. We can expect if they do release it on the 8th, as far as the event, we could expect a pre-order on the 12th with a public release of iPhone 17 on the 19th, meaning that iOS 26 may release to the public on the 15th. So we don't have exact dates. They could push this a little bit further. They could be even earlier. We just don't know yet. But let me know what your best guess is as far as the iPhone 17 event goes. As far as benchmarks, I did run those on this device and they're actually pretty good. 3,438 for single core, 8,497 for multi-core. I ran it just once and compared to last week, take a look here. So you'll see it's well within the margin of error. It's staying pretty consistent throughout. However, I would expect it to get a little bit better once it's released to the public. So that's everything with iOS 26 public beta three and iOS 26 beta six re-release. Of course, if I find any more features, I'll share them in the weekend follow-up video in a few days. Let me know if you've found anything else as well in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>